Welcome back ladies and gents. Before I start my video tutorial, if you look at the corner there, there's a red subscribe button. Make sure you tap it and subscribe to my channel. In this video tutorial, I'll be looking at 7.7 .7 modelling with trigonometric functions. Now modelling questions are just questions in context. So here's the E slash P question. E indicates exam, P indicates problem solving. Express 65 cos theta minus 20 sine theta in the form R cos in bracket theta plus alpha. Where r is greater than 0, alpha is between 0 and pi over 2. Give the value of alpha correct to 4 decimal places. Now the very first step is to write this particular trig equal to this trig over here. So let me put that down. I've got 65 cos theta minus 20 sine theta is equal to r cos in bracket theta plus alpha. The next step is to expand this cos using the addition formula for cos. So I'm going to write down the addition formula for cos in bracket a plus b. That is equivalent to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. So I'm going to use that formula to expand this cos over here. If I do this, I obtain r cos theta cos alpha minus r sine theta sine alpha. Now my next step is to swap these two terms over here and swap these two terms over here. If I do this, I obtain r cos alpha cos theta minus r sine alpha sine theta. So what I can do is put a little rectangle around 65 and a little rectangle around r cos alpha, a little rectangle around 20 and a little rectangle around r sine alpha. Right, so what I need to do next is compare the left hand side and the right hand side to generate two equations. The first equation will be r sine alpha equal to 20. I'm comparing the sine thetas. So that's my first equation, r sine alpha equal to 20. The second equation will be r cos alpha equal to 65. I'm comparing the cos thetas. So r cos alpha equal to 65. Okay, ladies and gents, the next step is to take equation 1 and divide by equation 2 to generate an equation involving alpha. So I obtain the following result. r sine alpha divided by r cos alpha is equal 20 divided by 65. Now the r's cancel out. Sine alpha over cos alpha is just tan alpha. So I obtain tan alpha equal to 20 over 65. Okay, so to work out alpha, all I need to do is take the tan inverse of 20 over 65. Now the interval for alpha is between 0 and pi over 2, so alpha is in radians. So when you calculate tan inverse of 20 over 65 using your calculator, make sure it is on radian mode. Okay, so after using my calculator, I obtain alpha equals 0 0.2985 to 4 decimal places. Now to work out r, all I need to do is take the square root of 65 squared plus 20 squared. And if I do that using my calculator, I obtain 5 square root 185. Now to finish off the question, I can write down 65 cos theta minus 20 sine theta is equivalent to R, which is 5 square root 185, cos, in bracket, theta, plus my alpha, which is 0 0.2985. All right, guys, so the answer to part A is up on the board over here. I'm going to keep it there because we might have to refer back to this answer to answer the other parts of the question. Let's move on. A city wants to build a large circular wheel as a tourist attraction. The height of a tourist on the circular wheel is modelled by the equation h equals 70 minus 65 cos 0.2t plus 20 sine 0.2t, where h is the height of the tourist above the ground in metres, t is the number of minutes after boarding and the angles are given in radians. Find part b, the maximum height of the wheel. First of all, I'm going to actually list my two variables, h and t. H represents height and it is in meters. T represents time and it is in minutes. 
To work out the maximum height of the wheel, I need to look up my equation for h. So h is equal to 70 minus 65 cos 0.2t plus 20 sine 0.2t. Now, I'm going to be comparing my equation for h, but excluding the 70 with this trig over here. Okay, what I notice is that there's a 65 there, minus 65 here, minus 20 there, plus 20 here. Okay, and in this trig you've got theta's, in this trig you've got 0.2t. Now what I want to do is obtain a positive 65 here and a negative 20 over here. So I need to factor out a minus, and if I do that, I get the following result. 70 minus in bracket 65 cos 0.2t minus 20 sine 0.2t. Okay, right. Now, again, comparing this trig with this trig, both of them have 65, both of them have minus 20. But over here, there's theta, over here, there is 0.2t. That's the only difference. Now, the equivalent form of this trig is just this one over here. 5 square root 185 cos in bracket theta plus 0.2985. The equivalent form of this trig will just be this trig over here, but you replace the theta with 0.2t. So now I can rewrite the equation for h as follows. 70 minus 5 square root 185 cos in bracket 0.2t plus 0.2985. Now to maximize the height of the wheel, all I need to do is maximize this expression. Now this expression will be maximized when cos is minimized, that is I need to set this particular cos over here equal to minus 1. And if I do that, I obtain 70 minus 5 square root 185 multiplied by minus 1. Okay, so 70 minus 5 square root 185 multiplied by minus 1 gives me the following result. 70 plus 5 square root 185. So the maximum height of the wheel in exact form is 70 plus 5 square root 185. Okay, in reality, you won't really say that the maximum height of the wheel is 70 plus 5 square root 185. So what I'm going to do is round this number, say to the nearest meter, 138 meters to the nearest meter. Okay guys, now the answer to part B is up on the board over here. It is 70 plus 5 square root 185, which is roughly 138 meters to the nearest meter. Now in the exam, when you round off a number, you should write down in brackets what you round to. So in this case, nearest meter. Okay, let's have a look at part C. In part C, we want to work out the time taken for one complete revolution of the large circular wheel. What that means is the time taken for the large circular wheel to move all the way around once. To tackle this problem, I'm going to start off by writing the equation for h. h is equal to 70 minus 65 cos 0.2t plus 20 sine 0.2t. But there was another form equivalent to this form over here, which was covered in part b, and that form is as follows. h equals 70 minus 5 square root 185 cos in bracket 0.2t plus 0.2985. Now, if you go back to part B, H, which represents the height, was maximized when cos was minimized. To minimize the cos, we had to set the cos equal to minus 1. By doing this, we obtained a maximum height in exact form, which is 70 plus 5 square root 185, which is roughly 138 meters to the nearest meter. So the maximum height of 138 meters can be labeled on a diagram. So if you look at H, it represents the cosine graph. So I'm going to draw the cosine graph as follows. And the maximum height that I've calculated was roughly 138 meters. Right, ladies and gents. Now, if I can work out this time over here and this time over here, then find the difference between the two times that will give me the duration for one complete revolution of the last circular wheel. So if the last circular wheel starts here, then goes all the way around, it will come back over here. Now, to work out these two t values, I need to solve this particular trigonometric equation. 
Right guys, so if I take the cos inverse of minus 1, the first solution is pi, second solution is 3 pi. All I need to do now is solve for t. If I solve for t, I obtain 14.216, 45.631 to 3 decimal places, and I've labelled the two t values over here. Now all I need to do to work out the duration, or you could say the time taken for one complete revolution of the last circular wheel, that is when it moves all the way around once, is to find the difference between these two t values. So the time taken for one complete revolution of the last circular wheel is just 31.415 minutes. Let's move on to the last part of the question, which is part D. It says, find the number of minutes the tourist will be over 100 meters above the ground in each revolution. So let's pick one revolution. For this one revolution, I know that the maximum height above the ground is 138 meter. Now I'm going to draw a horizontal line which is this line over here. Okay, that represents 100 meter above the ground. Now the region that satisfies the condition is this region over here. All I need to do now is work out this t value over here and this t value over here. And once I work out the two t values, I then need to work out the difference. And then the difference will give me the number of minutes the tourist will be over 100 meters above the ground in each revolution. Right guys, so the equation that I need to solve is h equal 100 meter. So this particular trick equal 100. Now all I need to do is make cos the subject. And once I make cos the subject, then I can start solving the trigonometric equation and work out the two possible values of t. Okay, now when you make cos the subject, you get this particular equation, cos in bracket 0.2t plus 0.2985 equal 30 divided by minus 5 square root 185. Now I need you all to solve this particular trigonometric equation and work out the two possible values of t. Okay, so you should all obtain t equal 8.6, t equal 19.8 to one decimal place. Now to work out the number of minutes the tourist will be over 100 meters above the ground, you need to find the difference between these two t values. Okay guys, so the number of minutes the tourist will be over 100 meters above the ground in each revolution is calculated by doing the following, 19.8 minus 8.6, which is 11.2 minutes.